be the factor that comes back to bite this team that has faced some of the craziest roster swaps I think we've ever seen in AWC history. We'll find out right now. This is the first time we'll see a Numliz on Restoration Druid as well, showcasing that Mistweaver, typically a Disciplined Priest main, also playing the Shaman now, diversifying onto the Druid. But an inexperienced Druid against a Rogue Mage is definitely a weak point that the Chalky Milkman can look to exploit. Yeah, I would have actually liked to see Yes Dave pick the Dark Stimulicrum in this matchup. Numlas gets sapped. Ashley might find an opening. Smoke Bomb gets dropped. Combustion, everything. Numlas responds. Trinket and Barkskin to keep himself alive. A beautiful cross crowd control there. Yes Dave and Rezu is going to have to help Numlas out. He's not out of it yet. Iron Bark gets committed. Gladiator safeguard. Anti magic zone. Every defensive cooldown. Cloud with a beautiful cycle. Numlas caught all alone. If he gets caught into another kidney shot, it is lights out for Numlas. Another Cyclone buying more time for Ashley. Ashley's kidney shot to reset. Numbless needs to get in bear form. Does manage to do so, but it may not be enough. Numbless is so far behind it. Huge hit takes down Numbless in game number one. Chalky milkmen smell blood in the water and a meat down plot twist. This time they're not trying to send them to the lower portion of the bracket. We're already here. They're trying to send them home. And the one thing I want to look for in this match is if Geller is playing the greater power of last build. I think he might get a little bit more value out of the Flame Cannon uh, Firestarter build where he can reset his combustion more often because I think with double ring apiece, the amount of interrupts Infernion brings, Rezus as well, it's going to be really unlikely he manages to find that spell, but we'll definitely have to see. Oh, ah, there it is. <laughs> see, good initiation by the Chalky Milkman. However, Infernion looks to counter aggress with Infernals having already landed. Gelu decides, all right, it's time to run. Infernion gates after them, looking to try and build up some burst damage. Needs to spend some more soul shards, try and get some interrupts. Fear on Ashley. That opens up Chaos Bolt potentially. Infernion fake cast, doesn't find it. Gelu nails the counter spell. Gelu is definitely been on point. He, he could be the X factor for his team to carry them through the rest of the tournament. We see a blind committed and Numbless reluctantly not trading his Gladiator's Medallion. And when you don't do this, crowd control can snowball out of control. Infernion dangerously low on health. The chain gets dropped, but they go for a smoke bomb play. Numbless moves into the cloning. Life cocoons into Cyclone, immuning the life cocoon effect. Clyde on fire in this series. Bashing up Numbless now getting the Gladiator's Medallion, but that may not even be enough. Another Cyclone. Where's the Polymorph? They get the Polymorph. Infernion still all alone. Jumps down out of line of sight, but Ashley continues the chain with the Garot. Wave of the Crane activated to stabilize the team and this is what happens if you make that trade not using your Goliath's medallion onto that blind you end up overlapping every single defense and now Chucky Milkman have an opportunity yet yeah, Numbliz with the way of the crane managing to keep Inferni on alive counterspell now on Numbliz the setup is not over here Chucky Milkman looking to close out this game and Inferni on getting lower Numbliz in the back line able to get out some heals greater power of last trying to be cast out by Gelu can he manage to find it? No, Rezus interrupts him. Another Cyclone by Clyde. Clyde actually sitting down in plain sight. Once again, regenerating all his mana. Infernion looking for some counter pressure. Manages to find the Mortal Coil onto Gelu. Looking for a Chaos Bolt as well. Ashley could be in some trouble, but with the positioning Clyde has, I think he's going to be able to easily keep Ashley and Gelu up. And now Clyde pushing in, looking for crowd control. Finds the bash on Numbliz, followed up by a Polymorph. Beautiful setup once again by Chalky Milkman. Yep, and let's see if they can get enough damage to nag themselves a kill and move to match points. Another Polymorph. Clyde's spell lock is fading. If he can get in position for his Cyclone, he moves over, looks for it. Numbliz able to avoid it thanks to Infernion's fear. Life Cocoon going to be more than enough to stabilize Infernion. Despite that close call at the start of the match, the defensive cooldowns are rotating back and readily available. Gelu now on the back foot. Chaos Bolt's flying in as he tries to reposition away from the fight, taking control of Rezus with Polymorph, stalling out the damage, giving Clyde room to breathe. No advantage really forming in terms of mana just yet. Blind now with no Glyre's Medallion. This is typically where we see the match end. Ashley continues the chain. Vendetta available. Surprisingly, not just pulling the trigger on that right away. Now pulling it. Ring of Frost gets Mortal Quilled. Infernion deflects the chain. Great positioning there on Infernion's part, allowing Numbless to now heal. Now counter-aggressing with a fear on Clyde. Looking for big Chaos Bolts. Gets interrupted multiple times and denied by the Chalky Milk Men as they try and chase Infernion down. But that was supposed to be the game-winning play, and they didn't win the game. So now Plot Twist can swing this back in their favor. 
Yeah, the one thing about Gelu running the Greater Power Blast is he's able to bait out a lot of interrupts. So Rezus using the Spear Hand Strike, Infernion using his interrupt to deny Greater Power Blast damage, but then all of a sudden, Gelu can go for the Polymorph that he needs. He actually manages to find one. Looks like Numbless will be able to deflect it with his Life Cocoon. They shred through it immediately. Infernion could still be in some trouble. A nice setup on Gelu as well. Rezus trying to find some counter pressure. Life Sweep coming in from Numbless. On to Ashley to slow down some of that damage. Infernion looking for some counter pressure. Clyde sits down for a drink, but unfortunately, Ashley, he has to trade out in both his Cloak of Shadows and Faint. Luckily, still has Trinket Vantage and Evasion if he needs to get out of trouble a little bit later on in the match. Gelo gets knocked off the side, tries to reconvene with Clyde, but they might stack up for a double leg sweep. They've got to be careful of that. Gelo really taking a lot of this damage. Ashley with Smoke Bomb available. Could switch to Resus maybe with a Smoke Bomb. Not going to do it. Instead, going for the safer target, the Warlock. Stalling out the damage, looking for a sneaky ring of frost around the corner, gets denied. Infernals have landed, no Cloak of Shadows to trade. Ashley needs to retreat away, ducking around the corner and just avoid combat. May look to retreat across the battlefield, gets kept in combat by Numbless, Crackling Jade Lightning. They need to just run away from Infernion. They opt to abort the mission, polymorph him, deny any sort of infernal pressure. He drops a gateway to try and get across the map. Gelu knows that's a threat, interrupts it, but now there's nothing to interrupt the Chaos Bolt potentially. They go for the double leg sweep, Infernion pops the Dark Soul. Nether Ward to try and immune a polymorph, gets Dragon's Breath on it. Ashley still taking huge hits, even without the Chaos Bolts from Infernion. They don't manage to pull any defensive cooldowns just yet. Fear now on the Clyde. Ashley vanishes into stealth. Smoke Bomb still available. Would like to see a setup on that with Vendetta here shortly from Ashley. Going for the blind. Kidney shot now on Infernion. Numbliz trades Zyre's Medallion this time for blind. Doesn't want to have that crowd control snowball out of control. Maybe they could swap to Numbliz. I, I actually think that would be their best maneuver in this position if they can find it. Yeah, they can get a kidney shot on Numbliz. It looks like Vendetta and Combustion are going to be available for Chalky Milkman, so definitely an opening there. And I think they might try to go for it. They're holding on to all their offensive cooldowns for now. All they need is one there it clean is. setup. There's the kidney shot on Numbliz. Yellow using everything he can with the combustion. Numbliz has to survive a little bit longer. He has the life cocoon. If he can connect it, he'll be able to live. He manages to do so. Weathered that storm quite nicely, but still not out of it yet. He gets interrupted. Numbliz, what are you doing? He gets interrupted. He's still in so much trouble. It looks like Rez is trying to keep him alive with the counter pressure, but Ashley in hot pursuit. Numbliz portals away. Clyde there. Another interrupt coming in from Gelu and a bash. Do they have the damage to take? Numbless down. What a close call. Numbless still not completely out of it yet. Ashley committed all cooldowns to all in on that attempt and didn't find a kill, so now Ashley needs to be careful moving forward. Mana still even on both teams as Plot Twist keep themselves alive in the lower bracket for another chance to battle it back for a rematch on Championship Sunday. Gelu under fire, Rezus is staying on target with that Tiger's Lust. Infernion not able to really get over there just in time, instead going after Ashley. Numbless caught in Polymorph. Could be an opportunity for the Chalky Milkmen here to get an unending resolve. That's what they're really looking for on this push, but don't even find enough damage to scratch Infernion. Infernion now looking to bounce back. Baiting and interrupt with Fear, looking for a Chaos Bolt. Gets Dragon's Breath on I love Gelu's positioning. Always at a corner, so he can duck in and down on those stairs to avoid any cast of Infernion. No interrupt available. Ashley gets Leg Sweep with no Trinket for one more second. Clyde stabilizes, but maybe not enough with multiple Chaos Bolts flying in. Ring of Peace onto Ashley, denying him from retreating back behind the pillar. Infernion moves over. They force Clyde off the box. He doesn't want to get stuck back there with two monks. That would not be a good position for him. Now he's going to jump to the opposing box, trying to max range them and force Numbliz out into center field. To managing to do so, Gelo almost catches Numbliz, but denied by Infernion. Meteor being dropped. Gelo trying to maybe force a kill here on Infernion. Clyde gets a clone. The setup looks good with two members in crowd control. Infernion respects the three on one. Trades on ending resolve, Ooh. reducing the damage. But even still, that may not be enough. They go all in to kill through the defense. They get a full polymorph. If Numbliz trinkets this, he'll be exposed to blind later on. He needs to try and sit through this. Infernion tries to scare them away with Infernos, but they're not being scared away. They continue the chain. Infernion could easily fall. Numbliz really doesn't want to have to use the Gliders Medallion. Connects a Life Cocoon. Still getting crowd controlled. Infernion Cycloned at low health. Chalky Milkman with a big opportunity here. Yeah, Gelu looking for a greater power blast. Can he get it off? Rezus with beautiful counter pressure. Gelu could be in some trouble. Forced into his first and potentially only ice block of the game. That was overlapped with the Iron Bark. There's definitely an opportunity for Plot Twist to put a point on the board and take Gelu down. 
Greater Power Boss once again being cast out. Gelu gets interrupted. Infernion could be in some trouble. Bash, Cyclone onto Numbliz. Gelu finds the Polymorph full. Numbliz has to trinket out of it. Now Infernion in a lot of trouble. If Ashley has Blind available, Infernion could ultimately go down. Yeah, but they have to stay alive to that point. They've got no mana really to do so and not much defense either. It's anyone's match here and potentially the final minutes here. Gelu falling behind Ring of Peace, punting him back to center field. He opts to blink back, but now he's out in the open. Infernion says hello. One Chaos Bolt will connect Gelu in a lot of trouble. Iron Bark on 5%, just enough maybe to stay alive. This is the blind attempt. If they can't kill Infernion during this chain, I don't think they ever will. They don't get the sap. Life Cocoon stabilizes. Gelu now on the back foot for likely the rest of the fight. Desperation, Polymorphs onto Rezus. Gets interrupted on the Ring of Peace. Looks for another Polymorph. Needs to get control of Rezus as long as possible. Almost doing what he can with not much left in the tank. Cloud gets a tiny bit of mana at least, but Numbles is now in a full Polymorph as both teams battle it out to the bitter end. Yeah, Infernion in a stun lock. Polymorph from Numbles. Do they have any follow-up? Cloud looking for a Cyclone. If he can land that, Infernion's going to be in a lot of trouble. Cloud goes for it. He manages to find it. Rezus gets interrupted, but Infernion's still healthy. They just don't have the damage to really push through. Ashley finally reconnecting. Gelu managing to find some spells. There's a bash on Numbles. The crowd control still looks good from Chalky Milkman, but Clyde almost completely tapped on mana once again. Gelu's so vulnerable in this situation with no ice block for another three minutes. Way of the Crane. Three members boosted damage. Gelu gets ring a piece out of Clyde's line of sight, trying to get back into it to stabilize, but there's no mana left. Numbles now in a polymorph. Infernia not with much left. How will he stay alive? Rezus is trying to counter pressure at the same moment. Touch of death about to go off. Rezus needs to carry the team here while Infernion is pinned down. Can he do it? Gelu treats him poor, but it's a couple seconds too late. Rezus is likely to carry the game. Gelu's cauterized proxies on the run. Two monks chasing him down to find the kill. There's no mana left in the tank. There's no defense left either. Infernion secures the mortal coil. Needs to just get one chaos bolt. Baby doesn't even need it. Gelu blinks away. Ring of Peace interrupts him. Clyde gets spell locked. And Infernion and Gelu could fall at the same second with Numbless still in Polymorph. Infernion, how are you going to live? There's nothing left. Ashley cloaks aggressive evasions aggressively to go all in against it. Oh. And here is the cross kill. Numbless and Rezus versus Clyde and Ashley. I'm inclined, I'm inclined to believe that Plot Twist might have an advantage here. Rezus is able to sit on Clyde. I actually don't know who wins this. This is 33% dampening. Kidney shot now secured onto Numbless. Both healers almost completely tapped on mana. What are we thinking here, Sid? I mean, in terms of defense, Chalky Milkman are ahead. If Numbless can regenerate mana to get away of the crane, then maybe that could be enough to push it over the edge. It's not often that we see a 2v2 between two healers that are completely out of mana at 35% oh. dampening. Clyde is taking the opportunity to get away. Numbless <gasps> tries to find him and misses. Oh, nightmare situation. He doesn't know where he list. is. He's going to go back to full mana. Rezus is getting pressured in the meantime. They try and go for an all-in on Ashley. Ashley respects that, says, okay, I'll trade Gliar's Medallion to get full mana and try and have that edge. Now the consistent pressure of the Assassination Rogue may be enough for the Chalky Milkman to secure game two. Yeah, Plot Twist is going to be really sad with what just happened. Clyde went to 80% mana after that, but Numbless isn't doing too bad. Both Numbless and Rezus just punching Ashley in the face right now. There's a full leg sweep. Rezus manages to find the incapacitate on the Clyde. He trinkets out. Ashley's still very vulnerable. They might be able to really punish Chalky Milkman for that drink. But a full kidney shot on Rezus. He managed to get the touch of karma before the stun. Beautifully done. But an excellent cyclone from Clyde denies a lot of that offense Rezus would normally have with that touch of karma. Clyde looks to switch the cyclone. Gets it. No Glyrus medallion available. But Rezus races with that touch of death. Ashley is respecting the touch of death damage using faint and iron bark to reduce it and able to stabilize. Rezus gets cloned up. I think Chalky Milkman have the edge now with Vendetta slowly and surely going to be available in five more seconds. And Numbless doesn't have enough mana to wave the crane just yet. Dampening at critical mass. Clyde's drink definitely carrying. It's unfortunate for Numbless for not being able to deny that, but Vendetta immediately gets popped. Ashley gets stunned on it. Fist of Fury overlapped with the stun, so now not able to benefit from the Turbo Fist parry effect. So maybe a little bit of a slight overlap on the side of Plot Twist in terms of their defense. Obviously, he wanted to counter aggress, but now he's exposed. Cloak of Shadows to try and connect on the Ring of Peace, but that does not immune the knockback. Able to reconnect with Death from above, but now able to transcend its roll across the map. Rezus with perfect kiting, flying serpent kick right back to Numbliss, but there's no mana. Garot onto him, interrupting any potential heals, but a double leg sweep. He got behind him on the evasion. Nice moves. Ashley gets bursted down. And Clyde's starting to struggle. Definitely, but Rezu's so vulnerable. He has 10 seconds left. 
on the touch of Carmen. They can get a kidney shot on Rezus. He could fall, but he has Trinket. He gets caught into the kidney shot. That's going to be the Gladiator safeguard, as well as Life Cocoon and Trinket. Clyde once again looking for a drink, potentially, but he's almost out of mana. Things are looking good for Plot Twist. Actually does have the Vanish, has to van Vanish out, but Rezus is feeling pretty confident here with this touch of Karma that he can survive the next push from Chalky Milkman. Ashley goes for a Vanish. Gura trying to boost that damage. Trinket's out to go for the kill. They have to kill in the kidney shot, otherwise Touch of Karma will redirect all of his damage. They don't even have enough damage to force the Touch of Karma. Ashley gets Ring of Peace, unable to get to the boxes and run away. Rezos goes all in with this Touch of Karma to find the kill. Fist of Fury adding some extra damage as well. Rezos rolls out a line of sight of the clone from Clyde against the wall, trying to stay on target just long enough to take Ashley down. The mana that Clyde got back earlier is completely evaporated. Rezos gets caught uh -oh. with kidney shots. Both Ashley and Rezus in a lot of trouble here at 52% damage, but the leg sweep on Ashley can easily secure a kill here. Is Iron Bark's defense going to be enough? It doesn't look like it's going to be. Ursul's Vortex gets put down. Ashley's shadow steps out to the defense. Innervate timed here for free healing, but even still, Clyde struggles. Yeah, Ashley's still low, but manages to stabilize. Now Rezus vulnerable with no trinket. If he gets caught into a bash, there it is. Ashley, can you close it out? Kidney shot on Numbless. Rezus left all alone, but a beautiful life cocoon keeps Rezus in it, interrupts the cyclone. Ashley still vulnerable. Numbless trying to create some pressure for his team. Rezus has to reconnect. Ashley manages uh -oh. to hide. He has the vendetta. If Ashley can get one more stun on Rezus, they could close it out, but I don't know if they're going to have enough time. Leg sweep used onto Ashley. Clyde has to trinket out of the incapacitate, but Ashley does manage managed to hold on. We're at there it is! Seven oh. happening. Kidney shot on Rezus with the Vendetta. How is Numbless going to keep him alive? Rezus ports away, dispels the poison, trying to kite away. Clyde pushes in. Death from above from Ashley. Rezus ultimately will fall. And Chalky, Chalky Milkman have done it, claiming game number two. Oh my goodness, I think this Mist Weaver, I think he's just frankly better at the Mist Weaver than he is at the Shaman, which is why they were reluctant to pick him this uh, healer in the first place. Well, if Chalky Milkman are able to take this, they will secure their spot in the top three. They will secure their spot on Sunday. And plot twist, they will be out of the tournament. I think Chalky Milkman are going to exploit this weakness. Once again, Numbless treading off onto a healer that he has limited experience on. And Gelu has quite literally been been on fire uh -oh. throughout the tournament today, and they're going to go straight for the healer, trying to go after that weak point. How will Numbless respond? Jumps into Ghost Wolf, running that Ghost Wolf build. Gets stunned on his free casted heal. Devastating for Numbless early on. It could be a Spearling totem. Astral Shift, Earthenwall totem overlapped. A bit of a panic attack, but he trades evenly at least. He's still struggling to stabilize, though. Yeah, if he has to trade on a Spirit Link totem, it's going to be a nightmare fear here for Numbless, but he manages to survive. Kelu now, he's overstayed his welcome, getting bursted down. Beautiful counter pressure by Rezus and Infernion. You cannot be oh. messing around. And a beautiful ring of peace knocks Gelu out of line of sight of his healer. Rezus looking to close out the game. Gelu might have to trade out his ice block, or it could be the cauterized proc. He manages to hold on. Clyde finds the healing that he needs, but Rezus with these ring of pieces, that's going to be devastating for uh, Chalky Milkman on this map. On this Blade's Edge Arena, Infernion can free cast. It's unlikely you will find a safe place to hide against the Destruction Warlock on Blade's Edge Arena. Blind attempt here by Chalky Milkman. Numbless going to respect that extended crowd control, break out of it, and not let it go out of control. Now that's an opening to switch back to him with the next Vendetta in 54 seconds. Of course, they have to make it to that point, so Gelo is going to jump off the side of the bridge to line of sight incoming Chaos Bolts, ducking in and out of line of sight as much as possible against the Destruction Warlock is a super effective strategy, but on this map it can be quite difficult. Yep, definitely have to see what happens. Rezus now into a polymorph. Good control coming in from Gelu. Here's the setup on the Numbliz. Do they have the crowd control? Unfortunately, not able to find it. Rezus shuts it down with a beautiful leg sweep onto Clyde and onto Gelu, but Dragon's Breath secures the full polymorph. Now Infernion in a lot of trouble. Unending Resolve forced to be traded out. And Gelu once again, line of sighting. He does manage to escape Infernion. Anytime he jumps off the side of the map, it's going to be difficult for Infernion to actually land the significant damage that he needs. So as long as Gelu can consistently land these Polymorphs on Numbliz, to try to allow Ashley some good uptime onto Infernion, Rocky Milkman still have a winning strategy in this game. Infernion actually jumps down stairs. Well, that allows Gelu to reposition up top. There's two targets right now that they can take down on the side of Plotchus. I don't like that they're going after Infernion. I think a smoke bomb kill on Rezus or a swap to Numbliz is their best option right now. And just go all in. Uh -oh. I guess they're actually just going to commit onto Infernion. They already got the unending resolve. I'm so very surprised to not see the Vendetta committed 
already in this position. All three members are attacking Infernion. It seemed like a very obvious play. I guess they're waiting for the Earth and Wall Totem. They want to make sure they can completely 100 0 him, but now they need to secure crowd control on the numbers to deny the Spirit Link Totem. Rezus is counter pressuring with this touch of death. It may be enough to force an ice block. Gelu gets a double Dragon's Breath. If they can get any crowd control off the back end of this, they drop the smoke bomb. They bash. He links the bash, but not three members couldn't get inside. I don't know if a two members' health is going to be enough to keep Infernion alive throughout this assault. Numbless manages to stabilize. Now Gelu on the back foot. Numbless casting a lava burst, adding some extra damage. Greater Pyroblast soaks up an interrupt. Mortal Quill denies the follow up cast. Gelu now gets spell locked. Multiple Chaos Bolts incoming. Ooh. Gelu tries to sneak in a Ring of Frost. Numbless dodges. Yeah, beautifully done by Gelu. Unfortunately, Numbless was on point with his spell. Now full blind on a Numbless. Is he going to trinket? Is he going to sit it? What is he going to do? Opting to sit that full blind. Gelu follows it up with a polymorph. Numbless immediately trinkets out. Infernion, no unending resolve still for another minute and 20 seconds. Uses his Dark Soul, looking to get aggressive here onto Ashley or Gelu. Chaos Bolt lands on Ashley. He has to trade out the Cloak of Shadows to survive. Clyde actually sat down for a drink during that exchange, so he's kept his team in the fight. And now, actually, Chalky Milkman have a mana lead over Plot Twist. Yeah, Chalky Milkman still in a position to just close this series outright and eliminate Plot Twist. These teams are only two points ahead, 62 points for the Chalky Milkman and 60 points for the team of Plot Twist. So quite evenly matched on points and competition, but the Chalky Milkman can get it significantly ahead if they can pull off a victory here. They've got good crowd control on Numbless. Triple threat here with that Feral Affinity attacking Infernion. They need to get a Cyclone. They don't get the Cyclone. Clyde gets Paralysis, and now Ashley in trouble. Tries to pre fate but they've opened up Gelu. He's free casting. No, Numbless denies the Greater Pyro Blast with the Wind Shear. Now Gelu tries to get a Polymorph. Not able to find it. Gets hexed on the Greater Pyro Blast. Tried to blink it, but didn't time it correctly on the position there. Now Gelu gets denied. Clyde wasn't able to dispel. He was spell locked. Ashley's just on the run, trying to avoid death. Definitely, Infernion still just a turret for his team, looking to find the damage that he needs. Now, Kidney Shot on the Numbliz. Are they committing the damage on the Numbliz? Doesn't have a trinket. He could be vulnerable. He does manage to get the Astral Shift, but that was, that was a bad trade by Numbliz. You can see if Ashley doesn't uh. fall here, things are looking good for Chalky Milkman. Ashley still has Vendetta. Gelu still has his Combustion. Infernion and Resus, they're going to have to play Miracle Worker here in order to keep Numbless alive. He gets caught into a stun with all those cooldowns. Numbless could easily fall. They should just all in Numbless. Just Ice Block, Crowd Control, Clyde goes Feral Affinity, attacks in cat form. They've got 20 seconds to kill Numbless. Or, sorry, 16 seconds. They should just go all in. Just Ice Block, there Cat Form, kill him. But they're not all inning him. They're reluctant to go all in. Clyde's in Cat Form, but he's hesitating. That one second of hesitation might be enough. It's not. Jockey Milkman are going to close this out. 3 0. Oh my goodness, and what a performance it was as well. Chalky Milk really start to predict which teams may be going to land, but we definitely know what's in store on speed versus the fake zebras. We're all tied up one and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.